Hey guys! So before we begin this video, if you could do one favor for me and pretend that this mess going on back here isn't there, that'd be great. So, also, before I begin this video, I would like to let you guys know about Skillshare, which probably a lot of you have heard about it already. It's kind of all over YouTube, but there's a good reason for that. It's a good platform and it deserves being shared. And this video is sponsored by them. What you're about to watch, this video is all about improvement, specifically improvement in art and how far I've come throughout the years. And that's what Skillshare is about. It's about improving yourself. If you want to improve in some area, one of the best ways to do it is learning more about that area. And Skillshare is a platform that provides the ways and the means to do that. So for those who may not know yet what Skillshare is, it's an online learning platform where there are thousands and thousands of videos teaching you about many, many different topics. There's illustration, there's painting, there's sketching, specific types of sketching like urban sketching. For the digital side, they teach Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, graphic design techniques, there's photography, there's music, there's topics outside of art, <laughs> there's like business and stuff, but since I'm an artist, most of my Skillshare classes are art related. But there are so many things on there guys, it is a wealth of information, and the reason for there being so many classes is because these classes are uploaded by individual creators, creators like me, like I could technically have my own Skillshare class if I wanted to. People are able to share with other people things that they have learned. Um, through this platform and I just think that's such a great concept. The best news about this is that it's actually really cheap. Skillshare is only $15 per month or if you want to do a year subscription it's actually under $10. I think that's a really great deal because you just pay for this subscription and then you have access to all these thousands of classes. And guys, before I forget, the best part about you watching this video is that you get to have two free months of Skillshare by clicking the link in the description. So go for it, check out Skillshare. It's completely free for your first two months, so you have nothing to lose, really. So uh, moving on to the video, <laughs> um, I am redrawing a bunch of pictures that I drew when I was in high school. Some of these include watercolor pictures, which when it comes to watercolor, I think that has been the medium that I've been the most lost in throughout the years. I don't know why, it's just I feel like with like, um, one of my favorite mediums is color pencil and I have a lot more control, like literally completely in control of your movements. With painting, like acrylic or oil, it's a little bit less control, but you still have a lot of control there because it's easier to control the paint. But when it comes to watercolor, it's watercolor and like water is very, very fluid and easy to get everywhere and easy to get places where you don't want it to be. Some of the issues I've had with watercolor also include just using too much and getting the paper, like, like pieces start coming off of it, you know what I'm talking about. I'll layer too much in watercolor and um, the lack of control will just be something that gets in my way. So in the past, I've used watercolor for just very basic things. Um, mostly just like backgrounds or I'll paint the picture in watercolor and then I'll go over that with like Copic marker or something to get in more of the details. And then basically completely negate all the watercolor work that I did, which means it was pointless to use watercolor in the first place. Um, but I have always wanted to learn more about using watercolor. So in Skillshare, I, used, I took some watercolor classes and um, of course I have improved on my own throughout the years just by experimenting with watercolor and stuff, but I think these classes were really helpful in sharing some techniques and just some new ways that I hadn't thought of uh, using watercolor before. So I'm going to choose some pictures from these to redraw. I just chose, I basically just grabbed a handful. I have like a box of all my old pictures and I just grabbed a handful of them and I definitely won't have time to redraw all of these, but I will choose a few. Now, I'm not entirely sure which watercolors I'll be using, so I kind of just grabbed all of them. This set is from Arteza. This set is from Artist Loft, and then these are Stadler and Artist Loft, just two watercolor paints. The idea is to use mostly watercolor, at least on all the pictures I decide to redraw. I'll probably use some pen too, and maybe just some other things if I feel like using them, but I definitely want to use some of the watercolor techniques I've applied and just see um, if I can improve on my watercolor skills. So here are the pictures that I pulled from my box. Um, and I think really these are all from high school. Uh, I don't think the section of the box I pulled from was old enough to be before high school. 
So anyways, I'll just show you them really quickly. This one was done with watercolor um, and acrylic paint. This one was done with Copic markers, uh, back when I actually used those. Now this one is really interesting. This is again another watercolor piece, nothing too impressive to look at. Here's another one with Copic markers. Um, this is a great example of what I used to do, which was just use watercolors for background because I was too scared to use them for the foreground. Um, so yeah, Copic and then watercolors in the background. This one, let's see, this was mostly watercolor, but I think I used, uh, I'm not sure. It looks like maybe acrylic paint in some areas and possibly colored pencils and Copics in other areas. This is just a whole plethora of art supplies. Plethora. Oh, this one is watercolor and looks like some colored pencil. And then this one is actually a redraw already of something I just like loosely did a while ago. And I think I already have a video actually that I did a while ago with this in it. So I just, like I said, I think this one would be a fun one because there would be a huge difference between this and whatever I do. So I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to choose three of them. This one. And, and we'll do this one. So I won't be like going all out for these redraws. Uh, I might just draw like the main characters like this one. I'll probably redraw her, but maybe not the ones in the back. Um, I'll just redraw her and then I'll just redraw her as a character. And let's go. Okay, now I usually outline um, because I'm scared of losing my lines, but for this one I'm going to challenge myself and just erase the pencil um, lightly and then try to see those lines still to be able to color it in. Um, so I'm going to try not to outline this time. I often fall in love too much with my line work, my original sketch. And that is a fear of a lot of people where they do the original sketch and then they're too scared to color it because they like it so much and they don't want to ruin it by coloring it. I think it's cool how your drawing can kind of reinvent itself as you color it. It can kind of become a completely new drawing and it, and it can turn out for the better. Sometimes it does turn out for the worst, but it can also just turn out for the better. And you would never know that it would do that it would have done that if you had stuck so strictly to those original sketch lines. Okay, so watercolor time. So in the video, um, one of the videos at least that I watched, uh, they said that watercolor artists typically stick to the rounded brushes. So I think I'm just gonna put some water down first. That sounds like the safest option. And um, I'm gonna color her skin first. So I'm gonna try wet on wet blending. Um, which is just as it sounds, you put wet paint on wet paint to blend it. Wet on dry gives you a little bit more uh, control over how you blend it, and wet on wet is a little bit harder because, again, it's like water on top of water, which is already hard to control. I think when it comes to watercolor, also, I'm, s I'm scared to use such pigmented colors. Like, I mix it with a lot of water, typically and I kind of stray away from using more pigment. So I'm gonna try not to do that as much this time. So since there's red light coming from beneath, I'm just gonna give her like more purple shadows above. I don't know why, it just feels like the right thing to do. I love about watercolors is that they're so easy to rework. I can just come back to this dry area, put some water on it, and completely change it. So in this drawing her is a pinkish purple-ish, and then there's also some blue. I don't know if I'll be adding that, but I will make her hair pink. I still find myself using a very sketchy method with this watercolor. 
like I'm using pencil or something. Okay, I have a great little brush that I can use. Two of them actually. I don't know why, but these have both curved up, so it's a little annoying, but they're still really good for getting little details. It's got that great red eyeshadow going on. I love it. I would totally wear that out. Actually, I wouldn't. I tried blue eyeshadow for like my eighth grade year. And guys, never again. At this moment in time, you guys are probably like, wow, that old picture is so much better. And you're not wrong. fun one because I'm going to completely, completely change this. I'm going to try to give her a more interesting pose. I usually go for pretty simple poses in my drawings. So again, this video is all about, um, I mean, it's all about seeing how much I've improved, but also challenging myself. So we're going to give her kind of strange pose. definitely a more cartoony drawing so I am going to outline it plus um, if I'm being completely honest <laughs> since the proportions are so confusing in this one I am definitely scared that I will lose those lines so I'm just going to outline it this time Okay, I'm actually so happy with this right now. I really like this, guys. Who knew that this picture would be quite possibly my favorite of the three. Let me go ahead and erase my pencil. It always is a bit scary when you erase pencil because it looks really cool with the pen and the pencil together, but then sometimes it just looks much worse when you erase the pencil. And right now, that's kind of what's happening. Um, <laughs> It looks so cool with the pencil, but hopefully once I color it, it'll look better. Okay, and this is because my stupid eraser has like yellow stuff on it. I want to start with her shirt first just because it's colorful and that's fun. So I'm going to do that. Let's do that. Now I'm scared because I actually really like this drawing and I really don't want to mess it up. Something I need to work on is choosing where I want my highlights to be and remembering to leave them uncolored. I'm really proud of the pose for this one because like I said, I'm not one who usually um, gives my drawings poses, my characters poses, like super intricate poses because I just focus more on like 
the like how the person I'm drawing looks instead of how they are posed um, and I get a little perfectionistic I guess and I want everything to be just so and since I haven't done poses that much I'm not that great at poses so I typically don't do poses unless I'm like looking at a reference or something but references unless you want to take them yourself of yourself they can be kind of hard to find for like the specific poses that you want to draw so I usually just make up my poses and it's hard to make them up um, and get everything, you know, proportionate and all that. I know these colors are very dull right now, especially compared compared to that. I kind of want to see how that looks if I put it on the whole thing. I might want to make my red a little brighter, but I like the more dull look instead of them just kind of jumping out the page at you. This is so much fun guys, I recommend redrawing all your stuff. I've done a few videos on looking at my old sketchbooks from when I was younger, a lot younger, and um, just looking at them, there was some really creative stuff going on back then guys. It was a little rough, as most drawings are from when we are younger, but it was some really creative stuff, and honestly I, as a 5 year old, inspired my 20 year old self. And I kind of want to go back and <laughs> redraw some of those. So just go look at your old, old sketchbooks and see what you can find. I'm just going every other stripe so I can wait for those stripes to dry before going in between. I started four hours ago, took a little break in between, but I've been at this for a long time. Um, so hopefully that won't reflect in this picture. So this was an interesting concept that I had. Um, I did this for a YouTube video actually, and I think it's still up, one of my super old <laughs> YouTube videos. Um, I think this was for like a color challenge or something, and I had to use brown, orange, and green. make this a little bit more mysterious. I'm gonna have her closing her eyes. Maybe I won't give her eyebrows. Oh no, the eraser strikes again. Shoot. I'm really quite happy with it.
end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had fun with it even though I was on a tight schedule. Um, I think my favorite one is a really hard choice. <laughs> I don't know. I really like both movies. Um, so tell me which one is your favorite. This one is not one of my favorites because I really just feel like it's missing something. Like maybe I should have done line art on it or done more shading or something. But it's okay. This is the first one, so you know, it's practiced around. But I would like you guys to tell me which one is your favorite. One, two, or three. So let me know in the comments because I'm really curious. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Don't forget to check out Skillshare. Again, get the two free months. Check out my description for info on that. It's free. You have literally nothing to lose. Just try it out and give it a chance. I'm pretty sure you will like it. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you for watching, guys. And I will be back. I hesitate to say next week because I'm not sure when the next video will come back. But I will be back with another video. And if you would like to see more and you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please leave a like. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps a lot. And also comment because I love reading those and I try to reply to as many as I can. Alright guys, until next time, bye! There's drawing, there's sketch... Alright guys, oh that, my hands just farted.